Comic Book Savant, episode 312. I know this. This I know. All that I have, all that is me, resides inside my poetry. And every time I write a rhyme, it might be the line that sets mine free. And also, I know that... Welcome to the Comic Book Savant Podcast. I'm your host, James Harris. This week's episode is going to be a holiday shopping guide. I have i didn't do, if I can remember, um, I didn't do one of these last year. Um, I did one the year before, maybe the year before that, um, of just a, just to put together an, a cool episode on geek related items that you might not be aware of that you might want to find to pick up something for yourself being uh, a comics fan and a comics lover or that you can pass along the episode to loved ones you know close friends family members that um, might also be coming into the world of comic books you know with all the television shows and movies it's becoming a big thing and it's really cool memorabilia toys and other things that you can buy for one another going into the holiday season. So I always think it's a cool, um, a cool thing to kind of look into. So this is going to be like an all in one shopping guide for the comics geek fan in your life. Or if you're looking for something cool to buy for yourself for the upcoming holidays, cause this is, you know, this is the very beginning of November. We're getting ready to launch into that, that holiday shopping season. Some of us might already have been picking up things for the, for the holidays, uh, gifts and so forth for people. So before we get into all that, as always, I'd like to give a shout out to my friends over at the comics podcast network, which you can find over at comicspodcast.com, And also the sponsor for this and, uh, every episode, which is in stock trades.com. Um, the best place you can go online to find collected edition, absolute editions, and so forth. Any type of bound collected edition comics related material you can find over at InStockTrades.com. They have discounts for up to 35, 42, and 50% off. Uh, some of the deals of the week that they have on the site listed currently, they have the Black Widow Volume 1 trade paperback for. 50% off, only eight ninety nine. With Doctor Strange coming out, they have uh, the Doctor Strange trade paperback. What is uh, what is that disturbs? Uh, what is that disturbs you, Stephen? Uh, trade paperback, fifty percent off, only fourteen ninety nine. Uh, they have the Flash by Jeff Johns trade paperback book three, fifty percent off, only twelve forty nine. Uh, we have International Iron Man. Hardcover, 50% off, only $14.99. We have uh, Nightwing trade, uh, trade Paperback Volume 1. Uh, excuse me, not Volume 1, Volume 5. The Hunt for Oracle, which is from the classic original Nightwing series written by um, um, Chuck Dixon and uh, drawn by Scott McDaniel. So that I did a trade your pick on volume one of the trade of this first volume trade of the series. Um, they've been re-releasing all these, which are could, uh, which is really awesome because for the longest time, it was really hard and very expensive to find the trades. And this is someone that thoroughly collected the series. I had all the single issues as well as all the trade paperbacks and this trade paperback probably, not just a few years ago before this, this launching of the re-releasing of the material probably would have cost you like 30 or 40 bucks just to get your hand on this trade. Uh, so again, that's 50% off is only 1249. That is a great deal. Um, also we have super, um, Superman, the final days of uh, Superman hardcover, 50% off only 1499. So they have some really great deals. Like always any, um, of the sales, um, excuse me, any orders $50 or more, if you're a U.S. customer, you'll get free shipping within the U.S. If you're outside of the U.S., you still get the good savings, um, but you just won't get the free shipping. But they do have some of the lowest and most competitive international shipping rates around. So if you do want to partake on the savings, you can. You're just going to have to cover the shipping, which, again, with all the other money you're saving and they're at the low international rates. It still comes out for you saving money. So definitely check out InStockTrades.com. When you have a chance, let them know you heard about them here on the Comic Book Savant Podcast. Now, with all that out of the way, 
is just really looking into the different areas of what's cool out there for comic book fans. Of course, we have just talking about in stock trades. You have you have your omnibuses and your absolute editions and Marvel masterworks, things of that nature that are rare reprinting of books. When you look into an omnibus, <clears throat> excuse me, an omnibus is a little bit different because it's a massive book. You can really hurt someone and never throw an omnibus at anybody. You might kill them. Um, I've had one fall from one of my shelves and almost crushed one of my feet. That is one reason why I do not miss having uh, print copies of all this stuff. Cause I got really um, early on when I start doing a podcast, I really abused in stock trades when I first found them and I bought a ton and I don't know if you guys have followed me on Instagram. I might post pictures somehow on the website to this issue. I mean, to this episode or even I'll put it on the website. I know I've listed on Instagram just to show you how my office used to look with all my comics everywhere around. I had literally like three to four bookshelves full of trades, absolute editions, omnibus. I just got obsessed with buying them. I, I had no room, any more room for single issues except for the current stuff, which as soon as I got it and read it, I would flip it and sell it on eBay just to buy the trades. So I could have it on the shelf. Cause I just didn't have the, the massive room it took to buy any more single issues consistently. Um, omnibus are very well put together. They're huge bound editions of a particular run, um, or, uh, storyline of a particular series or, um, a creative team on a particular book. Now here's and and well, let me say this going in and the uh, omnibus can range anywhere from $30 to as much as $150 depending because they've, they've, they've grown this, you know, a few years ago or, you know, seven, eight years ago, it was really rare um, to find the omnibus. And it was a format that Marvel kind of played with and they've gotten more and more popular over the past like decade or so. So it was a lot more of them. They played around with different formats. Um, some of the original omnibus they had, um, one that I wanted to recommend because it's become so prominent the past uh, two years or so is uh, Alias. That's the Brian Michael, Michael Bendis series um, that is about Jessica Jones. That the first season is based on much of the the um, omnibus. It was about, I think the series ran somewhere around 30 some odd issues. They collected it in one omnibus. It was one of the hardest ones to find because, again, this was a test format. So they they ran a production of so many. Um, they kind of let it sit out there. Again, it was all new when collected editions were really starting to grow outside of just the realm of a trade paperback. This is a hardcover, big bound book, like huge book, like heavy to carry. This is something that you're going to sit down at a table at home or in a reading room, if you have a reading room or in a living room and sit down and read these, you're not, these are not meant to be on the go slap, throw in your backpack and just go. <clears throat> um, at one point, cause I know this because when I sold this omnibus, this is how much money I made about it. They were so rare and it's cause they were out of print and they did not go back into production. You could sell this, this omnibus when again, originally retailed for about right under a hundred dollars you could sell it for three, sometimes four times that much. So you, that hundred dollar investment, you could have sold this, this um, omnibus in its heyday a few years back for up to $400 on eBay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they became very valuable. The one thing is, is that with the boom, and I think a lot has to do with the, the money of having a company like Disney own Marvel now and all the movies that are in production. So many more people are searching out this material after seeing these TV shows and movies, it's become, they become so popular. A lot of these original omnibus that came out, another one that was hugely popular was, um, the Grant Morrison, um, X-Men run that one. I, I know I sold for like $500. Um, again, it retailed for 99. If you didn't get it when it first was being produced, it was out of print for many years. Now all these books are being shot, spit back out reproduction in trades. The omnibuses are being reprinted. They're, they're putting them out in multiple formats. They're being released digitally back then. If you wanted these stories and you didn't want to hunt down the individual issues, it was the only way to get it. And diehard fans paid out the nose to 
get these rare print copies. Um, I'm kind of glad I got rid of them when I did. I rebought a lot of this stuff digitally um, and let fans have it, you know, but it's like, it's kind of crazy now because if I would have kept this stuff for all that long, it would have, you know, maybe it still retains the value because their first printings, you know, it's, it's hard to tell, but I was never um, a comics reader to be a comics collector. And that's where I had to come to the point of letting physical media go to digital media, but that's a whole nother thing in itself. But um, that's what made these omnibus special. And that's, and that's what still makes them special. Um, and it's been a ton. And sometimes I feel like they, they certain stuff that they put in omnibus doesn't need to be collected in that manner, but you know, it remains to be seen. I'm just glad this stuff is getting collected and, and redistributed to the fans because some of the stuff was really, really hard to find um, just in general. So some of the recommendations I would give if you're wanting to do an omnibus and I'm like, if you have a really cool office or comic room that you want to really display your collection and you don't want single individual issues, omnibus is a way to go. They're beautiful on the shelf. I always would get a lot of comments from people when they would come into my office and, you know, and see the, the bookcases full of the, the, you know, the trades and, and the omnibus because the omnibus are, are like huge books, massive books with massive spines. So they really were show pieces on a shelf. So they really look beautiful. Um, again, we have alias. Um, it's a very popular one. If you like the Jessica Jones series and you want um, the original series, you can find that, you, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I saw it on sale other places. I know they've even broken it up into trade paperbacks to even make it even more affordable. So you can get it in multiple formats, but if you can find the reprinting of the alias omnibus, it's a keeper. This beautiful artwork is oversized, highly glossed pages, high quality production that will stand the test of time that you can reread. You don't have to worry about these books breaking down. Another one I would recommend is the secret wars omnibus from the original uh, crossover event of all crossover events, uh, secret wars from Marvel comics from the early eighties. I grew up on that. Um, just again, beautiful artwork, glossy pages, phenomenal. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Avengers and they reprinted these and I can't find the trades and that then they're starting to put them out digitally. Um, these are two personally for me that if I could get, I would get these two, which is Avengers West coast Avengers volume one omnibus and Avengers West coast Avengers volume two omnibus. Um, just a series from the eighties. Um, really the series that made me fall in love with, um, characters like Hawkeye, Scarlet, Witch, vision, those, those second tier of, of Avengers, um, in the mid eighties, they split off the team. They had a West coast Avengers team, uh, which Hawkeye was the leader of, which really made him come into his own as a character that we later got to know in the comics and kind of, um, what we're seeing the growth of now in the actual movies, which makes me wonder, um, though people don't love Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye, I could kind of see them split off something after, the, uh, the infinity, what is it called? The infinity war, um, and set them up because they have him with a super close relationship with Wanda. And I can kind of see visions tagging along. And I, so I can kind of see in a four foreshadow, maybe if they got inventive, they could have to, you know, Avengers West coast, the Avengers and the Avengers West coast, kind of with Hawkeye breaking off on his own, um, on the West coast with, um, with his own group of Avengers, it would be interesting. It's, it's something that they kind of have slowly low, um, laid the seeds in the movies that I could see that being somewhere they go. If, if Hawkeye makes it out of Avengers affinity war, but that remains to be seen as well, but I could kind of see the seeds there. If they want it to go there, they could take it there. Um, next one is the new Avengers by Brian Michael uh, Bendis omnibus. It's the, I think it's like the first 30 issues of the new Avengers run. That was just groundbreaking. That really got me back into the Avengers at the time. Uh, we got Spider-Man introduced to the team. We got Wolverine introduced to the team of Avengers, really good series. And this leads up and through, I think all the way up to the, the first 30 issues. So um, it even covers the civil war um, crossover issues 
from the new Avengers, which is very important because a lot of things, they actually introduced Dr. Strange as a, a part of the new Avengers team as well. You got Iron Man and Iron Fist, which is all kind of relevant right now. So this would be a really good um, book to read um, to kind of get an idea on how all these characters kind of interact together since we're already seeing that in the cinematic universe, or we're going to be seeing it soon when, uh, Affinity War comes out, so it would be kind of cool to kind of see how they already mix and see how true to that that it'll be. So that's one to check out. You have the Immortal Iron Fist by Matt Fraction, and David Aja. This was a classic from about gosh, I think this series is about eight to ten years old now, <laughs> at least eight. I want to say Immortal Iron Fist when it originally took off was about eight years ago. Um, they re envisioned Iron Fist. Um, it kind of feels like this is not the take on Iron Fist they're going for in the television show. I think it's going to be kind of, it's going to take some notes from the Immortal Iron Fist series, maybe mix in with some of the classic origins. It's going to be a hodgepodge of both. This was a really more serious, larger than life take, really brought this character in the, um, into the forefront and really updated his whole origin, the whole legacy of the Iron Fist. They did a really, really great job. This, you know, Matt Fraction really took off with this series. Um, you know, then it spun out to Hawkeye and then he had a humongous run on Iron Man, the Invincible Iron Man as well. So this is a really good series. This has the his whole run on a series, which I think it went 18 issues with uh, Matt Fraction and Aja on it, if I am not mistaken. And this this book covers their whole run. It might have ran like 16 more issues or something like that before it totally um, before it uh, was canceled or before it ended. Um, but this is the original run that made it a, a sensation at the time. Next one on my list is Thor by uh, John Michael. If I can talk, just JMS. I can't, I can't even get it out. Straczynski or JMS for short and Oliver Cop, uh, Copiel, um, just after Thor Ragnarok, which is cool. It's crazy because we have the movie Thor Ragnarok coming out within the next year. Um, that this is them reintroducing Thor and Asgard and the Asgardians back into the Marvel universe after Thor Ragnarok happened. And they kind of took a hiatus from the Marvel world for a while. This was their reintroduction back into the, um, the Marvel universe. And this was just, some of the best visuals. Oliver Coppell is one of my favorite artists. Um, I love that the, the um, I want to say, uh, I've talked about this a lot. I think it's issue number four of the series where um, Iron Man has a confrontation. Well, Thor has a confrontation with Iron Man for how, if you're not familiar with civil war and the civil war original series, not the movie, um, Tony does something a little despicable. He has uh, gathered some DNA from Thor and makes a clone that goes out and originally kills Goliath. And, and this is after Thor has come back to earth and, and he, he knows and he has learned of what Tony has done. And it's the first confrontation that he has with him or first time seeing him since he's uh, come back from Ragnarok and it's a come to Jesus type meeting. And I loved about this initial run. They really sold you on that Thor was an actual God and how powerful he actually was. Cause sometimes that gets watered down to other characters like Hulk and things like that, that he's more of a second fiddle, but he is a God. He's an immortal. And it was like the first real time in a long time, probably that they really depicted that extremely well in the comics. So that, that enough, that is another, uh, story. This, um, omnibus is really, really good. That's worth the, the money. Um, this is a smaller, the iron, excuse me, immortal iron fist. And this next one, we'll talk about invincible iron man, volume one omnibus. They were more, um, they weren't had as many issues in them. Um, they were, so they were a little bit, a slimmer factor than some of the other ones. They didn't retail for the higher end of a hundred or over a hundred bucks. Cause some of them could go over a hundred. Um, they were more like 30, $40 range. They would have like 19, 20 issues instead of like the 30 to 40, some issues in, in the collected edition. So it was weight thinner profile, um, still high quality with the glossy pages, glossy finish, oversized pages, blown up artwork, color correction, all that great stuff. Um, 
Um, this covers again Matt Fraction, Savador LaRocca, La their epic run that they had on Invincible Iron Man. The series launched shortly around the time of the first Iron Man movie, and that run ran through. I think it ended somewhere around the third when the third movie came out, or a little bit before, maybe a year or so before. But they had a long run on the uh, series, really good. Um, I think I actually got this as a Christmas present one year. Um, love Fraction, love Salvador La Roca, but hadn't bought the issues. And someone got me this, and I burned through it like in a few hours, just this few hours sitting. I just nailed it. And I went back and I bought all the other trades and, and um, issues. And I just love this series. Matt Fraction, one of my favorite writers. Um, great series. Definitely a fun. If you uh, like Iron Man, this is one of the best Iron Man series you're going to find, period. So definitely, if you want to dip your toe in it, check out Invincible Iron Man Volume 1, Omnibus. And then you have Infinity Gauntlet, self-explanatory. If you want to read up with the... Uh, uh, with the movie the Infinity War coming sh- soon, you might want to read up by picking up the Infinity Gauntlet one, um, and also Wolverine um, by Mark uh, Millar or Miller. Um, this one collects Enemy of the State and Old Man Logan into one, which are hands down the two best Wolverine stories probably ever, or at least in the past decade to decade and a half. Hands down, my two favorite uh, stories. Uh, so definitely those would be my top suggestions for Omnibus you can pick up. Now we're going to get over to Absolute Editions, which is basically, I'm not going to say it is DC's answer to the Omnibus because it's something a little bit different um, or it started that way. They, they, you know, so many different things are put in this format now. I think the meaning and what made the two formats as special in the beginning to now has kind of got watered down. Um, but it's a business and they're trying to make money. Absolute editions were the, the best of the best stories ever told in DC put in this beautiful leather bound oversized um, slip case cover edition um, with some of the, it had to have, it had prerequisites that had to be met. It had to have the top talent on it. Um, it had to be exceptional art, exceptional writing. It had to be a, basically a modern classic to be even considered for absolute editions. And they, they at the time they were released one to maybe three a year. Um, and it, it was an event when they came out, it was an event. Um, I've owned quite a few, uh, absolute editions. Here's some of the ones that I would recommend. And this is recommended based on me even owning them. So I know for a fact how beautiful they are. Uh, Batman long Halloween, Jeff Loeb, uh, Tim sale. One of the best Batman, uh, mysteries or mysteries ever in comics. Um, kingdom come probably the best DC universe story, probably next to the crisis on affinitive earths that, um, that was told <clears throat> Batman hush, Batman, dark victory, green arrow that covers the beginning of the Kevin Smith and Phil Hester run. Um, the watchman absolute edition preacher rest in peace. Steve Dillon that just passed away recently. Uh, DC, the new frontier rest in peace to Darwin cook, uh, which we also lost this year. Um, then we have Batman Court of Owls by Snyder and Capullo. Identity Crisis by um, Meltzer and Rags Morales. Um, those are some of the, the great ones. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I've owned the Batman Long Halloween. It looks stunning. Tim Sell's artwork bl- uh, blown up on the the big, large pages with the glossy covering. Oh, same thing with kingdom come, um, with those painted Alex Ross pages. Oh, beautiful. Jeff, um, Jim Lee's artwork for the hush one. Phenomenal dark victory. Also that's Loeb and sale again. Uh, Phil Hester's artwork on the green arrow, especially when it really launched with Kevin Smith that put that character back on the map. There's no way now that we would have that show on television. If it wasn't for this run of on the book, um, <clears throat> excuse me 
but just phenomenal artwork. Some of these, and it's, it's a tons more. So don't just be confused and think the ones I'm suggesting are the only ones that are out there. That's why, you know, we have places like um, Amazon in stock trades. If you want to look up these digitally and you don't want the, the physical copy, you're more like me where you're going more digital. You can go to comiXology, but I'll get more into that later. This is just kind of pointing you in some directions of what's out there for you to get <clears throat> or buy or get for someone else. Next category I wanted to kind of cover was Blu-rays, you know, special collector edition sets. The only thing I could really come up with, and I did research on this kind of let's looking around on the internet to see what's around. The only thing I could think of in this category, you, you know, it's always special editions or collector editions of individual movies. I was thinking more of big sets that are like more would be like the, anywhere like the 200 to $250 range. The only two things that I could really think of that would be nice set pieces into any man cave or comic collector space would be the Marvel cinematic universe phase one and phase two collector edition sets. Cause they did something special when each phase ended. We, for phase one, they had the briefcase with the Tesseract that actually had like batteries in it. So when you would open up the case, or I think it even had a hole in the case where the Tesseract would actually shine blue through. And then you open up the case, you know, the movies were housed in there. That was, you know, that was really cool. I don't know if you can, if that's still in production, I saw a few things on eBay and on Amazon where you might can buy it, but it's not going to be $250 anymore. I think at the time they re it retailed for about that much. You, if you want to find it new, like unopened, you might pay double that from certain things that I saw. Not saying maybe this holiday season, they might put it back out in production or maybe do something where they pack phase one and phase two together because they also did about a year ago. Um, phase when phase two ended, they did a, another one where it was the um, from Guardians of the Galaxy. I can't remember which one that was, what gem that was. Part of the um, Infinity Gauntlet. Um, was it the Soul Gem? I want to say it's the Soul Gem. Uh, the Soul Gem. Um, and they have that where you can open it up. Where that scene where Benicio del Toro. Um, the collector opened it up and you saw the gem, you saw all the, you saw the visions. It has that. So you open it up. It has that purple stone glow. It has like batteries in it as well. And then underneath the, 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 um, which you sit that orb on at that mount is uh, underneath it. They like house all the movies. So it's another cool show piece that you can have. Um, now that one retailed for two fifty. <clears throat> excuse me. It's still in production because that was only about a year ago. You can get it from anywhere. I think it retailed for like two forty nine ninety nine. I've seen it for that to anywhere close to two hundred. <clears throat> so you can shop around and potentially find that and get a good deal on that still. Um, and again, we still don't know everything that's coming out for the holidays yet. So they might do a special bundle where both things are together. I'm not sure. Um, but just from me looking around online, snooping around the collection, the phase one collection is not still sold like retail. Um, you would have to go in the secondary market, like eBay or, you know, sometimes they have third party sellers through Amazon. And that's mainly where I saw it. Phase two, you can still find readily a lot of places. Um, next thing I want to get into is the next tier of comic book collector collectorism, I want to say, or when you start getting into that next level of comic book collecting. And I've delved down this path as well. And it's a dark, very costly path, but it is so cool to own some of this stuff. And it's when you start getting into statues, um, hyper realistic or hyper um, posable figures. You know, you have the Bowen designs, the, uh, I hope I couldn't pronounce this correctly. Uh, Kubakaya. They do like a, it's a Japanese company that does statues. Then you have hot toys that do very expensive, hyper-realistic, a um, lot of accessories, a super detailed action figures that are very pricey. We have General Giant that does, that does statues as well. Um, and sells a lot of different collectibles. So this is the next realm I'm going to kind of cover. Now for Bowen Designs, if you've been longtime listeners of the show for a while there, I collected quite a few of the Bowen Design statues. Um, they are very, they can, you know what, let me say this. 
I mean, they're reasonably be priced. You can get certain statues, um, <clears throat> excuse me, anywhere from two to four hundred dollars. So they can can be reasonable, and they have things like mini busts and stuff that are like are in the forty to fifty dollar range. But if you're really going hardcore and want a fully uh, formed statue, they're going to be anywhere from. <sighs> 200 to maybe $500, maybe even more. If you're trying to find one, <clears throat> excuse me, that is um, out of production. Um, they used to have their own site up. I could not find it. I don't know if they've gone out of business or not, but it's still a huge market on eBay. And this is where I bought a lot of mine. Or if you go to a local comic shop, a lot of times they all have, you know, statues and you're going to find them in this price. If they've gone out of business, then they're going to might be even more on the pricey side than they were a few years ago. Uh, last one I bought had to be oof, like four or five years ago. Now I had about, I think I had like three or four, I want to say, um, which I no longer have, but here are some of the recommendations that I would give you guys. I'm a huge better Ray bill fan. I own this statue. It was a beautiful statue. Um, it was just phenomenal artwork. Then they had a taskmaster statue that I try to hunt down forever and I could never find it or find it at a reasonable price um, that I just would pay for it. Or I even had that I could even afford uh, because the people that do have it to try to sell it, they know that, you know, it's a limited amount of these Bowen used to basically have a collector's club and, you know, could once, you know, maybe two, three times a year, they would have a statue release you know, it, and it was numbered. It had a certificate of authenticity. It's only so many of each of these statues in the world. So like if you didn't pre-order and they would sell out amazingly fast when a new one, whenever a new statue was announced, you were just out of luck and you would have to go through the secondary market and just pay what it bears or luck out, maybe go to a comic convention. Um, I only didn't just shop for these for myself. I had um, a really good friend, Chris that lives down in Florida that was a huge uh, statue collector as well. And I would look for him when I went to different, different shows and he did the same for me as well. And they could get pricey just depending on what you wanted and the scarcity of said statue. Um, also they had a really cool daredevil statue that they did. This was in the last kind of run, maybe five, six years ago that they did a beautiful um, daredevil statue where he's looking over the, um, like looking over a building and they did it in two different paint jobs. And sometimes they would do variants of it. So they had them in the, the red outfit and then the original red and gold outfit or red and yellow outfit, daredevil outfit. Um, that was a beautiful statue. They did a really nice, huge set piece, uh, Hawkeye statue that I wanted. That was kind of, I think you could gather other statues and like make a whole scene kind of similar to what they did at the end of, Age of Ultron, when you see the the statue, was kind of similar to that where Hawkeye was actually on a mountain, like shooting some stuff. Uh, just very articulate, part of a scene that you could piece together um, with maybe some of the other statues and, and you know and make something and make a scene out of it. Um, could never get my hands on that. Uh, they had a Captain America statue that I tried to help my friend chase around. This was around the time of the first Captain America movie when this statue came out. Um, just an iconic pose with, I think that's the, uh, shield was on his back and he was kind of in that classic Steve Rogers hands crossed, like straight down with his hands cuffed together. Um, pose, um, really cool statue was very pricey. Like when I was trying to help my friend find it, I mean, you couldn't find that statue for less than like five, six easy anywhere you looked and I went to conventions and everything. And every time I saw that statue, it was a lot of money. And this was, um, the last one I want to recommend is a moon Knight statue. I actually have pictures of this statue too, probably on the website. Um, again, like I said, I own the better Ray bill statue I own the moon Knight statue. Um, this one was a cool, it came in a variant and it was a funny story behind the variant of the moon Knight statue because how he was drawn in the comics and colored, it was either thought that um, that Moon Knight was either white or gray. So they had two versions, and depending on what how you thought the character were was is you know which one you could get. But I think the the gray variant was the more inexpensive one. It, the demand didn't call for it as much, but the white one 
sold for like twice as much and it was a lot harder to find and it was a lot more pricey. I didn't really care about the color. I just wanted the statue and it was cool. So I went with the one that was cheapest. And again, like I, I had those statues for a little while. I have to check the website to see if they're there, see if I can dig up the pictures I have. So you can kind of get an idea in the scale. These are huge, beautiful set pieces, um, very pricey. But like, if you want that special touch and element to your, your man cave or your comics nook or corner, this is a nice piece to have as a collector. Um, if you're a comics fan to, to have around. Um, but again, this is, just, these are just suggestions that, or different phases of different things that are out there that you might be aware of. You might not. Again, I don't, but I tried to find a bones designs website. I couldn't find it. You could do a search for bone designs on, on, um, <clears throat> on eBay. You'll find a ton of statues and they didn't make just the full body statues. They made, um, they had mini busts as well, which were cool. Like I said, they were, they were, um, a cheaper entry to get into. Um, most definitely, where the statues were in the hundreds, you could get the um, the minibus for under a hundred, easy. And they have just as many, and they're very well sculpted and crafted. Um, again, I will put links in the um, posting on the website uh, to everything that I can gather of all the stuff that I talked about to try to put you in the right direction. Um, again, the next company is Tukabuka Poop. Kuto Bukyo, I think is how it's pronounced. I think I probably butchered it, but again, I'll have the links to the site so you can see all this stuff for yourself. Um, they had some really cool statues. They have, um, um, they had an Avengers Age of Ultron Hulk Buster um, Iron Man um, artifact statue that was for 200 bucks. That really looks good. And some of the stuff they have, you'll when you go to some of the sites, you'll see things that are going to be coming out that won't be out till next year. And that's another thing, too, when you are a collector of things like this, you have to jump on and pre-order. You have to do a lot of pre-ordering um, because these things, they, they have it on sale for so long, they'll pull it. Then they have to mass produce these things, and they're works of art, so it takes a while. So certain items, if you go to the different sites, you'll see, well, why didn't he talk about that? Uh, some I did that are scheduled to come out between now and the end of the year. But if it, it was scheduled like to come out later into 2017 or midway through 2017, I try not to list it here, especially if you're trying to get something for someone during the holiday season, you want to make sure they can get it somewhere around the holiday. So I kind of excluded those things. Um, but age of Ultron, Hulkbuster, Iron Man, that looks magnificent. The have a Captain America Civil War um, artifact statue, uh, sixty nine ninety nine. They have a Star Wars Darth Vader Return of Anakin artifact statue, fifty nine ninety nine. Looks really really good. They also have a Captain America uh, Civil War Iron Man statue, also sixty nine ninety nine. An Avengers Age of Ultron Hulk statue that's also sixty nine ninety nine. So these are a little bit more reasonable. They're not the scale. Um, as the, the Bowen statues, which they're like 17 inch, you know, statues. I know specifically like the moon Knight one was a super tall one because he was looking off the edge of a building and like you had the, you had the, when you put the statue together, like it's, it was tall and they have heft and weight to them. Uh, these are a really more scaled down so they, you can buy more, put them all over the place where, you know, you couldn't put more than one or two of the Marvel, you know, uh, the Bones designs full statues out on a shelf, you know, because they just are so massive, but they're so beautiful and so worth it. But these are beautiful looking. I've never owned any myself, but just from the pictures, just that Hulkbuster one really jumped out. And that's why I probably, and cause it's a bigger, it's a bigger design of a statue than the uh, uh, other ones that are more smaller pieces, but the Iron Man one looks good. Um, and the Captain America one as well. Uh, next I want to talk about hot t toys. And like I said, they do the super, um, articulate, like multiple points of articulation. Um, you could change faces, heads, uh, hands. They'll have all like the different accessories. Like these are super, super detailed. When I say super, super detailed, um, if you frequent the site IGN, which is a huge video game, comic book, uh, website, review site, uh, movies, pop culture, just in general, they did, if you search on YouTube for IGN, um, I want to say it was um, 
Thanos. They did a Thanos uh, Hot Toys, I want to say. It was a Thanos, and they did a um, uh, Kylo Ren and and um, a Ray also, I think, when Star Wars and stuff came out. If you search for those individual ones, you'll see an unboxing and what I'm talking about and why these things cost so much money. These range of just some of the ones that I'm, are, that I'm going to talk about from uh, Hot Toys are ones that are you that are coming out between this month and next month or early January of 2017. And just to give you an idea on what you're getting if you pay for them, I don't know if I could ever pay that much money for an action figure, but I, though this Hawkeye one I'm about to talk about looks beautiful. It's based on uh, the character design from the Captain America Civil War, all the arrows. They even have an arrow with Ant-Man miniaturized on the tip of it, just like in the movie. It looks so good, but it is $219. I don't have that kind of money to, uh, yeah, to be buying anything like that. If you want to support that, though, you can always go to Patreon forward slash comic book savant and contribute to the show. But otherwise, I can't afford it. I'm a poor podcaster. P.P. Poor podcaster. Anyway, they have an Ant-Man version that's um that's for pre-order. It releases in December. It's for $234.99. They have an armored Batman in black chrome that just looks stunning. Right out of Batman v Superman. It is basically $250. Bucks. Um, it really ugh. If I I'm having the hardest time talking today. I, I really am. Sometimes it sucks being a podcaster when you can't talk. Um Again, it's two fifty, and it releases in late. Well, it releases sometime this month in November. Um, they just they just said November twenty sixteen, so it can be released any moment now. They have a Joker, Batman, uh, imposter version that they did this alternate version of Joker in the Batman suit from Suicide Squad. Um, that's supposed to come out in January of twenty seventeen. That's the only reason it looks really cool. It has like this, like the from the movie you saw the spray painted uh, like Robin suit. It's a spray painted Batman suit. It retails this one retails for two sixty four ninety nine. Again, these are pricey, and they had a dope Wonder Woman statue that you can pre order. Not statue, I mean action figure that you can order. That is two thirty four ninety nine. That releases next month in December. Um, again, uh, if you, I'll have the links. If you go to side sideshowtoy.com, that's a reseller for hot toys. If you go to their main site, you can just see what, re, what are, what is uh, coming up for the release. And they have super high detailed fleshed out pictures. So you can see everything you get with it and the craftsmanship of it all. Um, just as far as retail to buy, you would have to go to sh- uh, sideshow. Uh, toy dot uh, com is one of their main re, uh, resellers or distribution channels. So you could you would go there to order them. You can't even see the prices because I found the Hot Toys site, which you could like I said, you just see what is coming down the pike, and you can see super detailed pictures of the individual characters. But you can't buy the stuff there. You have to go to a, a, another retailer. Sideshow is one of the, the the biggest ones that I found that had a lot of uh, Hot Toys for you to to buy there. Um, Last but not least, we have General Giant. They've been around for a while. They do all kind of statues and different uh, different var- variations as well. Uh, some recommendations I found here: they have a Daredevil mini bust. It retails for one twenty. It releases second quarter of twenty seventeen. That's a little ways off, but it looks really good and it's based on the um, the Netflix um, Charlie Cox Daredevil character which is really good. They have a rocket raccoon animated statue. Um, it was based off the cover of rocket raccoon. Number one, back in 2014, uh, only 65 bucks. This was really cute. Then they have a full grown rocket and, and Groot statue. That is four forty nine, four ninety nine, dollars uh, 99 And then they have, um, a Glenn statue from, uh, in his full riot gear. From The Walking Dead, which I thought was fitting since, you know, everything that happened with Glenn on the show. This is cool for uh, $449.99. And they have a really nice Michonne statue uh, as well from The the Walking Dead TV show, $399.99. So some really nice stuff. And I'll have, like I said, I'll have a link in the post on the website 
to all the different websites you can go to to get a glimpse of all this stuff. And you can see what other stuff they have to sell. And like I said, certain things have release dates that are pre-orders now that you can get later next year. But again, if I just kept things to try to keep it close to um, between now and Christmas as possible, if you wanted to get someone or get yourself something to have at that time that you will immediately get, you won't have to wait on um, that. It could fall into that realm for you that it's actually um, so that you can get now in hands. Um, also, you can't fail with gift certificates. Like I said, I stayed at a lot of different places. Uh, Sideshow, they retail. You can get gift certificates there. Amazon, you can never fail with Amazon. You can get, you know, you can find some of this stuff on Amazon. If not anything or everything on Amazon, uh, you can get that person a gift certificate there. Or if you're someone that receives a gift certificate, you know, you can go track down that stuff on, on uh, Amazon. A cool thing about Amazon too, and having an Amazon gift card. Now, you know, if you're not aware, Amazon bought comiXology, what about two years ago now? So like you, um, they're kind of, they're the same company. So if you get an Amazon gift certificate, you can use it, you know, potentially to buy comics or you can go directly to comicsology.com and get a gift get um, your own special gift certificate from the site itself. Um, in stock trades, if you're not aware, they sell gift certificates as well. So that's the gift that he keeps giving. And of course, there's always um, iTunes. If you want to buy any of the movies, comic book movies, you can buy them digitally. So uh, iTunes gift card can always go a long way. So it's a lot of different avenues and venues to get um to get gifts and, and to receive gifts. So if someone's unsure, and this is something I always do personally, um, if anyone is unsure of anything to get me, I will just say you're safe. If you can get me, if you can just get a gift card from one of the places I just named in stock trades, not many non comic people are going to go to in stock trades.com. Uh, so I'll say iTunes, Amazon, or comiXology or the places you can normally go to get me a gift card, whatever the amount that's cool. Um, and you can't go wrong. Another thing that I forgot that's on the list that I forgot. Marvel has recently started a subscription, uh, collector's box, uh, service. If you've ever heard of companies like loot crate, I think one company is called hero crate. Well, Marvel has their own service now, and this is something that people can get for you. That's reasonably priced. I think you get six boxes a year. They have, um, like they have, they'll have a different theme every other month. They do boxes every other month. Um, they'll have a particular theme. They might have mystic arts because Dr. Strange is coming out. I think the last box they put out was X-Men, what X-Men are Wolverine themed. So you'll get like a t-shirt, you'll get, um, uh, figures like pop figures that if you collect those pop figures, they'll do special ones for the Marvel collectors box. Like I said, you get pop figures, um, t-shirts, comics, little figurines, keychains, buttons, all that kind of stuff. You get a mixture of stuff. The box is normally have a value of, of the contents value about $50, but you pay $25 a box or $150 a year for your six boxes or $25 every other month. If you want to do the payment plan, it comes out to the same as $150 any, either way you cut it for, um, six boxes a year. You can get the shirt ranges. Cause when you set this up, you have to tell them what's, um, size shirt you are. And they range from extra small to a uh, triple XL. I don't even know if that fits me because I'm a big wide brother. So I need like a, maybe another X on that XL. Um, but that's kind of cool as well. So if you're down for that, I'll have that link in there as well. And that's just some suggestions, you guys, that again, even if this episode is not for you and I haven't turned you turn the light on for you for things that you might want to buy for yourself. That's a comics fan or other comics fan friends that you have or family members that you have. Um, but if you, you might be people that are, you know, that might be considering buying you something, this is episode is you, you can drop and share with them so they can listen to it to get some ideas of something that would surprise you. If it's something in a particular area that you would be comfortable with as a comics fan, it's, it's really great. Like I said, I've owned some statues. I've owned a different, um, 
omnibus and, and uh, absolute editions, which are super cool. All of it just enhances your comic space to, to just make it feel more at home. I loved having, uh, like I said, the statues and the absolute editions and the um, omnibus like on the bookshelf when I had that whole setup. Um, so it's, it's a cool thing. Don't knock it till you try it. So again, I thought this might expand your horizon some um, and can be a helpful guide to uh, for others trying to understand certain things that you would like in the realm of comics. So hopefully I helped. Um, I was able to help do that for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I will see you guys again next week for another episode of comic book savant. You can follow me on all the different social medias. The website is always is comic book savant.com on Twitter, on Instagram, on Snapchat, all at comic book savant. And then it's a facebook.com comic book savant page as well. I'm posting more stuff over there. Um, I'm trying to post more on Twitter to interact with you guys. Uh, more because I want to hear what you guys have to say so I can incorporate it into the show. I want this to be a fully formed um, back and forth type of experience. So again, if you haven't hit me up on those platforms, do so submit questions, comments, any, any, anything suggestions, any of the above I'm receptive and I will uh, bring it in and bring it in and incorporate it into the show. So I will see you guys next week. Take care. And into lyrical wholeness. And I know this, and I know this, this I know, this I know.